Okay, hello everyone. My name is Mike. Nice to meet you. This was originally called A Day in the Life of an AP, and it was actually meant to be a comedy routine, believe it or not. I'm keeping with the same, uh, the same theme generally, but it was meant to be actually a comedy duo. So since we don't do duos here at, uh, at the conference, here's what we're going to do instead. So there's really an agenda, not much to, uh, to say here. Who am I, why I'm going to tell this story, and uh, the ultimate point. This is me, Mike Lane. Used to be with Extreme for many, many years. Now I'm doing my own thing. That's me. So uh, the idea is I've recently become a CWNT, but I've been a trainer for a very, very long time. And I've talked about Wi-Fi, I've talked about network engineering, I'm almost 30 years in the business, uh, and I'm very passionate about developing knowledge and about helping and mentoring uh, people getting into the business or their junior, or whatever, whatever they are in their learning uh, curve, in their, in their learning journey, I'm very passionate about it. And I've recently uh, gotten the CWNT, and now I'm a teaching officially under the CWNP, and I, I take that very, very seriously. Whenever I, I teach, I, whenever I get to the point, especially about RF fundamentals and especially about antennas, I, I study geography. I didn't study uh, computer technology. I'm not really a diploma engineer or anything like this, uh, but I am fascinated, for sure. And like I think this is true for many of us in this room, and of course the wider audience of those uh, who are gonna see this video, uh, they're, again, at different places in their learning journey. They may or may not have that uh, deep technical background. I get just fully amazed at the complexity of how Wi-Fi works. Just, just the RF alone, the physics of it, just blows me away. And so, let's talk about these crazy multitasking beasts called APs. What an AP does, and this is just meant, you don't read any of this, in fact, this is not meant to educate you in any way. This is not delivering any information. This is just a, a, a brief list. Uh, I took hours and hours and hours, days really, trying to think how can I condense and really, really communicate the vast amount of tasks that an AP is doing in every moment. And no, you can't do that in 10 minutes. You couldn't do, in a CWNA class in a week, you're barely skimming the surface. I think we're all quite aware of that, if, especially those of you who've been through the program. Uh, so I just took a random, random sample uh, just to show very quickly the density of the information that, that people, when they're, when they're learning about Wi-Fi, if they're taking the CWNA class, have to, uh, have to consume. So are you ready? Let's go. This is not meant, again, for you to consume, just for you to see. This is the kind of thing that I'm telling people boom, and boom, and boom. Learn it, yes, memorize all this, yes. New information, new information, new information. Can you handle it? Yes, all right, yes, and there's more, and there is more for days and days. Any questions? Have you had enough yet? Are you ready for the test? So I remember when I was learning, definitely feeling, and I was so lucky in my career to have Keith as an early mentor, Devin Aiken, and so many others through my company and through others uh, working and learning that uh, it, it's been fantastic, and I've had many years of experience. However, uh, we're always learning. We know that, yes? We're always learning. And this, this topic, really, these 10 minutes that I have with you today are really just about that learning process and about really the wonder of all of the layers, the evolution of technology. Look, we, who was talking about the planes? And in 100 years, now we're going to the, to the moon, and we started out with the Wright brothers, and before that, and so on and so forth. The same absolutely can be true. If you look at the, the history of radio frequency and uh, networking in general, crazy. So as I go and learn, and I'm nothing about math or physics do I know, except what I learn maybe online. This is credit to uh, Ian Explains, just a YouTube channel from a, a great guy who is, is good at this. I'm not here to, to uh, promote anyone, but just as an example, there's so much information that you can get out online. And so I watch these videos. I watch another person's videos, uh, to learn about the greatest uh, and the latest evolutionary tech like we're doing uh, here from a certain gentleman. I put that slide up before he even spoke today. Uh, and so you can, you can look at these videos. There's so much information on there, so much to learn. I was originally going to tell... I, where's my clock, by the way? Okay, good. I have five more minutes left. I was originally going to talk uh, really about the listing each and everything, especially things like transmit beam forming, like the previous slides were about MIMO. If you really just think about what it takes in each and every microsecond, nanosecond really, what the AP is doing, 
that gives me some respect. I, th I think Igor actually wanted to take that picture. You can do it. Um, so above all that, the sense of wonder. That's, that's what I have as I continue to learn, and I'm peeling that onion. After almost 30 years in the business and at least 15 years doing Wi-Fi, uh, I'm just continually learning. And so if I had to pick one thing, one thing in this short presentation that I wanted to give an homage to, and really the, the one thing that gives me the most wonder, there's actually two things on this thing. It's the evolution of the semiconductors, which enable this. But does anybody here know the, uh, the history about the Fourier transform? Just a raise of hands, anyone? There's one, a few. It's actually an amazing story. And uh, uh, credit this video I've just taken directly from uh, Ver Veritima, oh, I'm not pronouncing it right. What is it? Veritasium. Veritasium, excellent uh, channel, this Veritasium. I highly recommend you go there. He explains this very, very well. And there are many, actually, many videos on Fourier transforms. A lot, a lot of them have to do with different technologies. But this tells the, I mean, the different uses of Fourier transform. This video tells the story of how that actually came about from nuclear testing and that the engineer who made it was sitting in a conference room with President Kennedy, just sitting there doing math, and he came up with a fast Fourier transform in the middle of the meeting. So I don't know about y'all, but uh, I've been in that situation, solving complex problems while everybody else is talking and I'm under pressure because I've been told, you have to fix this, you have to fix this, and like, oh, come up with a solution, you know? Not to this level, of course, because this really changed the world. I have just a couple minutes and I want to ask you this question, nothing to do with Wi-Fi, but similar about physics. I think I've, I just mentioned semiconductor development and the Fourier transform basically have enabled uh, radio frequency transmission to the level that we have now. We wouldn't have 1024 QAM, we wouldn't have OFDM, we wouldn't have these things if we didn't have the math behind them, right? We can all agree on that. Anyone, can anyone tell me, apart from the, the obvious that, that semiconductor development over the years has, has, has led the growth uh, and these evolutions, in the modern internet that we have today, can anyone tell me, think about optical networking, if you, if you will for just a moment, two technologies. And this is really just to point out that many people don't think about the Fourier transform or the fast Fourier or the discrete or all the different variations of this mathematical function. Uh, but can anyone here tell me uh, the two in the optical networking space, the two technologies that enable the modern internet today? If these, if these evolutions did not exist, if these technologies didn't exist, we would not have. AI! AI, definitely not at all. And what does that have to do with optical exact? Well, it could. Anyone? No, it's okay. We won't take too much time. It's DWDM and passive optical ampl uh, amplification. So anybody ever heard of DWDM? Just as a, as a poll, good. So about maybe a third of you, half, maybe a third. And what about passive optical uh, amplification? Yeah, that's a, a, a rarer one. But if we didn't have those two technologies that very few people, and this is why I really had to mention them, is because this is a, going to be on, this is going to be on record, right, for everyone to see. And this really is a message, I want to look at the camera, this is a message to the learners out there, that this onion that you peel will never, you'll never find that core, because there's just always going to be so much to learn. Keep doing it, get your certs, get out there, get the experience, and have fun. One of the, uh, uh, in the first slides, I talk about this multitasking beast. I went out to, I'm just starting to experiment with these uh, AI image generators, and this is the silliness that they came up with. But I thought that that, that was quite funny. So uh, if you just take a moment to appreciate, if you can, and for those of you who are learning, try to take a list and list like all the things. Think about AAA. Think about um, contention. Think about... Uh, Backward compatibility, that in, in itself, that, like dual preamble in Wi-Fi 7, what? Preamble puncturing, what? There's so much that amazes me to this day, even after almost 30 years. So keep being amazed. I hope you have a great journey. And de qui, gracias, danke, un, thank you. All right. Thank you.